Hello, everyone, and welcome to Hi-Fi Mafia TV. Uh, we're here with a very august panel today of audiophile experts, and we got a great agenda, which is really no agenda, because um, we got a few things maybe we want to talk about, but we've been having these live streams once a month, and sometimes it's slipped a little bit more than that. We did at TAD, we did SVS, we have Esalon scheduled for March 21st, so guys, be sure to check that out. But um, today, we decided to do them once a week, so we hope you guys will join us, uh, grab a beer or something or whatever it is. Right now, it's 4 o'clock in the afternoon, at least Eastern Standard Time. But we're going to be doing these every week, talking about, uh, you know, what's new, what happened this week uh, in the order file world, and also some other stuff on our minds. I kind of feel like um, we're on a, I, I see the crypto, you know, streams. Like, I think they're like crypto bros, you know what I mean? They go through, and each guy says, oh, I think crypto is going to be at 100, you know, Bitcoin is going to be at 100,000. And the other guy says, no, you know, 30,000, whatever. But here we are, just guys, introduce yourself, members of the Hi-Fi Mafia, uh, again, which we created to have, you know, periodic regular streams. So we have Giles. Giles, say hello. Giles from uh, home, you know, your home theater. And Hi-Fi Giles Mafia. McCoy, yeah. Giles McCoy, uh, I mean, the eponymous. Yeah. Welcome, everybody. So uh, uh, for the folks coming in from other channels, my name is Giles McCoy, and I run a number of different socials out there. I'm at the Giles McCoy or at Giles McCoy on YouTube. So you can find me just about anywhere. And I cover all of entertainment technology. Though. So that's everything from hi-fi, audio file, two-channel to multi-channel to mobile, uh, compute, gaming, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, even TVs. So uh, excited that's to be here. That's some travel stuff, right? Um, I have a separate channel uh, called Travel Fanatics uh, that me and my wife run, and so we do uh, uh, about one piece of content a month. Um, we, you know, we only we we get to take one vacation, big one a year, so we film as much as we can, and then we stretch it out. Um, but uh, you know, that's my retirement plan. When I'm, you know, sixty and retired, it's just going to be travel all the time, and that channel will be popping off. Me and all we'll the looking, other old geezers. We'll be looking for you, Daniel. Right Daniel Barber, ba aka Base Therapy. Oh, what do you got for us? What's going on, guys? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm based therapy. I don't know what I do. I just post videos and they blow up for some reason. And I love hanging out with these old guys. I know I'm young, but we share the same mindset. <laughs> and I thought Giles was way closer to 60, but never mind. <laughs> All right, man. Well, well with that. It's, it's, a, it's a trap. That's bait. With that, with that introduction for Daniel... Uh, let's move on <laughs> uh, to Ray, a.k.a. Hi-Fi Turtle. Ray, what's going on in your end of the world? What's up, everyone? Ray, Hi-Fi Turtle here. Find me at, at Hi-Fi Turtle pretty much everywhere. The leading reptile-adjacent audio page, all things audio, everything like that. Always new stuff coming in. We've got some really cool reference components coming in now. You know, the, everyone's seen the new Dyn audios from me. Uh, we just finished up the YG review, the YG Talus. Uh, there'll be more from YG probably later this year, and uh, got some more stuff coming, some more some audio stuff, some SBL stuff. So uh, stay tuned and some secret projects that I can't talk about yet. But you know, if you subscribe, you'll you'll be the first ones to know. All right, that's great. So where do you think Bitcoin will be in one year from now? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, have, still in my uh, my bank, getting bigger and bigger. Well, it's well before we get to that. So it's true, Giles. Right, you had a lot of Bitcoin at one point. Is that not correct? Oh, yeah, at one point. But this is way back when, uh, you know, before they were even commercial miners for sale um, at, or in the early days. You know, I was I was smart when I got started and mined out a ton of it. And then I was stupid and I sold it all. Uh, if Yeah, if, if I had held all of it, yeah, we wouldn't I wouldn't be here right now. I'd be in the audience listening to my new vivid speakers as opposed to talking about them. Awesome. So, Ray, no, no guess on Bitcoin? This is ne this is next year or end of year? One year. One year from today. One year from today? When I think about that, let's go around. Giles, what do you think real quick? Uh, well, okay. It depends if the, the financial institutions are really jumping in or not, if we want to no, shift no, no, into no, Bitcoin. One, one year. Where is it? Uh, just say a number. At, uh, 476248 Okay. Precise. Okay. Uh, I don't really look into it that much, but probably a hundred grand. I don't know okay. how much is it now. Probably 70, right? But I don't know, especially with taxes not being applied. And I think the government is going to start tracking it way harder than before. I don't know. It might go up. It might go down. But All right. I we think know it's going to go up or down. We get that. We're just looking for numbers. And Ray. 100K. 100K, Ray. 35,000. 
Oh, oh go the other way. Now. I'm going to say 120 for Bitcoin, and we'll see how that works out. Okay, so we got that. We're going to revisit that on our stream one year from now and see how all of our projections kind of panned out. But a um, couple of audio file things on the agenda for today. Again, this was really informal. We didn't really public. We didn't publicize this at all. I, I put out something like two hours ago. Um, and, and again, I'm Howard Neller. And not even again. I'm just introduced myself first. I'm Howard Neller from the Listening Chair. Um, we have a YouTube channel where we cover a lot of audio file events and 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 shows. And we just started a Facebook group about three months ago. The uh, the Listening Chair with Howard Neller. We have almost 12,000 people already. So it's, it's growing pretty rapidly. It's very dynamic. People are posting their stuff from all over the world. So, so check that out. We're on every we're on every social media platform. For, as far as today, uh, just a couple of, talk about whatever we want to talk about, or whatever someone in the audience wants to talk about, if there is an audience, because like I said, we didn't really publicize this. But some things on the agenda would, would be the, the new Vivid Moya M1 speaker. Um, it's, $465,000 is the hottest thing out there right now. I was just speaking to uh, Ewald Verkirk and uh, Lawrence Dickey who designed the speaker this morning, and they sent me some photos from China where they're at a show, and they're saying that the speaker is getting an unbelievable reception there. So those guys would have jumped on this stream, actually, except at, right now at 4 o'clock Eastern, 4.08 Eastern, it's 4.08 a.m. Uh, in China right, where they are at the show, and they, those guys are exhausted. But – uh, so that's one thing we're going to talk about. Um, I got a new markup. Well, I got a new one this morning. I haven't had a chance to look at it yet, but I have a, a semi-new markup of my listening room project um, in my home. And it's going to be a state-of-the-art listening room. We will talk to maybe a little bit about that. And then um, someone, I, th I think one of you guys said you want to talk about Expand a little bit, what's going to be going on there. And uh, anything else, if uh, anybody has uh, any uh, anything else they want to talk about. Sound good? Yeah, that yeah, sounds, sure. that sounds well, definitely. great. So let's talk about the speaker first. Yeah, this Vivid Audio, Vivid, Vivid Audio Moya One. It's yeah. big. I think I think this is something. It's big. It is really big at four hundred sixty-five thousand. I when I first saw this, I thought that Vivid was going to come out with something that was going to reach into those really higher ultra echelons that we've seen come out from like Magico most recently with the M9, uh, Sonus Faber with their Suprema. Uh, try, you know, Wilson Audio has been there for a long time with their uh, Wham Chronosonic. So I was thinking that the Moya was going to reach into that probably 750,000 plus range. So at 465, you know, it's a it's a definitely a new uh, price range for Vivid, but it's not at the crazy ultra competing for the, the crown level, uh, at least price wise. Now, sound wise might be completely different. And might be might be something that Vivid saying, well, for less than half a million, we can compete with those guys. Um, especially, you know, is, get, sorry. No, I was gonna say it's just especially given you know their capabilities that are uh, completely in house. You know, Charles, can you throw a photo up? Or the, or do we have one we can throw up? Of this? Yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually put up their uh, their website so we can all take a little gander there of what they've got going on. So just bear with me. And you yeah, so keep so on this is a, a five-way speaker, and and when when Ray said it, this is big. I didn't know whether he meant physically large or this is big news. But it's a thirteen-driver speaker, five-way design. They weigh seven hundred and sixty-three pounds a piece. And the first time I looked at it, this is such a massively large speaker. It's, it's the exact opposite of, in some ways at least, of what Audio Group Denmark is doing. Audio Group Denmark has you know just what you, they think you need, and, and and they're not looking to make a big speaker physically for the sake of making a physically big speaker. Um, and so I look at, it's, it's hard looking at that just in a vacuum. You see that in a room, which I did. And um, you saw, first thing I said to myself is, how does that speaker get itself out of the way of itself? How does it get out of the way of itself? It's so large and obviously it's not a square box. So that's done for a reason, but really a very different design approach than, than someone like Audio Group Denmark, which gives you a much, much smaller speaker either for that or more money, but it's pretty, uh, it, it's pretty cool. I mean, uh, does it, it, does it assemble in four pieces? So, you know, I was looking at the back here and they, these things are all daisy chained off each other with these, whatever those things are. And I'm just yeah. curious if it assembles as four or if it's just one piece. Those are four, those are four braced enclosures essentially. So they come in four different boxes and you assemble it or it just comes as one pre-assembled 
speak. I don't, I don't know, you know, whether they come yeah. in separate flight cases or whether they come all, all together, I, I have no idea, but those are four separate cabinets, each using um, eight of their C-225 base drivers in cancellation modes. Um, and then there's a panoply of other drivers on there, which basically add up to 13 drivers per speaker. Yeah, and they're focusing on the 400 millimeter voice coil. That was like one big biggest point of their speaker. Yeah, that's a big voice coil. I mean, no doubt. Yeah, yeah that's what August. five point something inches. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they actually put out a really cool like brochure about the the Moya that I think a lot of people honestly just t totally missed on their website. I've got that pulled up, Giles. If you want me to to share that, yeah, feel it's free to really, share it. Yeah, it's actually really cool. I wonder if these guys are going to have the speaker at Expana. That's what I'm they're hoping. Not. They're not. They're not. Yeah. Do you know for that for sure? Yes, unfortunately. No. Yeah. They already said it. That's and true. this year is probably like really expensive speakers released because Sonos Faber released the uh, Suprema too. Yeah, Suprema. We'll see if that's there. But yeah, they released yeah. this brochure on their website. I think a lot of people missed out on it. I so, just you know, know. It uh, I was over at House of Macintosh and they had the Supreme up there, and uh, mm. it's pretty impressive. The price is a little bit eye-opening. Yeah, that, for sure. That, <laughs> that's the seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. Not is, that I is that the that. speaker they had at uh, CES. Yes, yes, that's the okay. speaker they had at CES. The CES was the debut money. for it. Right on. Yeah, not that I don't have the money for it. Just I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, they're showing off quite a few things on, on this on this brochure. You know, they have they're showing their their taper tube loading, which is featured in a lot of their speakers. I think every speaker of theirs has the uh, taper tube loading. That's what Lauren Sticky, you know, designer and owner of Vivid, is really known for. Uh, there's the super flux magnet that they're putting in for the the tweeters. Is that they're, a is that a neodymium magnet? Do we know? Because I read it and it's like we use rare earth. Uh, yeah, they just—they're just calling it a rare earth magnet. They're not Isn't specifying it if it's pure, yeah, pure, purely neodymium. Yeah. yeah, you know, you're talking about that um, that port for, for each of the drivers. Giles, maybe if you can pull up. Uh, Lawrence had sent over one of the things he had sent over was a post where they show a flute that was made out of a three a three D model flute. That shows the benefit. Now we don't not going to hear it, so we're not going to be able to, to talk. But he sent a photo of that, which is, shows the illustrates the design of this of these drivers, the ports behind the drivers. So uh, the, on the, the tube, comments, real quick, the, uh, Larry said, not port, but the tapered tubes you were just showing. Yeah, which are the drivers, right? Yeah, that, that thing. Uh, can you pull up the photo that I sent you? Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't see that that photo. I see other photos, but I don't see a photo of, of that. Yeah, you can you can share it. Just pull up on your screen and then just click share or present down at the bottom and select the app that the picture is open in. Oh, here it is. Okay. Wait, real quick. Work. Larry said they look like the BMW Nautilus, and there's a reason for it. It's because it's the same designer. Yeah. The yeah. same guy that made the Nautilus made these. He works at Vivid now. What just wait, slide or video file or share screen? Share screen, and then it'll allow you to choose the app that you have the picture open the speaker fits on the screen yeah okay. they're pretty big so like tab to share yeah just just play with it you'll figure it out you okay. should just uh you just have to make sure you open up the photo in some application and then you can share that app No, nope. we, we lost. <laughs> we lost Howard. We lost Howard. All right, right, we'll, we'll, we'll wait for we'll wait for Howard to come back. Yeah, we'll keep going. So yeah, yeah. there's a reaction canceling driver and ports. So we see in this there are, there is actually two ports. Uh, actually, I guess three ports per pair of uh, of base drivers. So these ports are tuned to 19 hertz which nice. is yeah is so low comparatively to most speakers like typically a, a lot of speakers don't tune their port frequency to like the lower frequency of that and usually even if the speaker is going to hit like 30 or 40 hertz we're seeing the port tuning probably in the upper 40s maybe even upper 50s in that case but this is port tuned to 19 hertz and there's the porting that comes on the sides here and there's also the porting in the back so half of this porting is happening in the uh, upper half of the the cabinet and then the rest of the porting is happening at the back of the cabinet which is a very interesting design and we can see that there's actually a bracing uh 
bar that goes between the two drivers to again cancel out those kind of vibrations that are happening yeah it's uh, interesting uh, on the port design because it you know it, it looks like each individual speaker has maybe a dedicated port that runs to the other side of the of the box and then maybe they both share the larger rear port is that I, yes it's hard to tell hard to yeah i believe that is how it is but definitely like in cancellation mode. Um, John, I just emailed you that photo of the tapered tube. Um, maybe maybe because I just tried to show it to you and I just kind of bounced myself off. So maybe we can pull that up. Yeah. Let's so see. Peter, oh, that, okay, that stuff. thing. I, I thought that was a bottle of whiskey or something. I, I didn't realize that. <laughs> that actually, yeah. uh, like I said, a, a flute that is was made a 3D um, you know, printer, I guess. And it illustrates the tapered tube design that they're using in the speaker. All right, so there's the there's the flute. what looks like. Oh a yeah, that, that that does look like some sort of like exotic alcohol. Yeah, I thought yeah. it was a, I thought it was a liquor bottle, and, and the, not, he was, he was sitting there sure. just about to get tore up, or maybe he's already <laughs> tore up. <laughs> I don't know, but yeah. he's I love his DJI microphone though. That's that's the, that's the same one I use. Yeah, I did not notice that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Again, and then, so apparently, uh, we have some photos from the show, but apparently um, Ewald uh, Verkek, who is the uh, distributor for the company, he um, said that they put it on, what's that Chinese uh, big social media app, WeChat? WeChat? Yeah, WeChat, yeah. yeah 1,000 shares on WeChat. Nice. Yeah, so it's making a lot of waves over there. And then we have some photos from the show over there. Also. Yeah, let me see if I can show some of those here real quick. These speakers definitely came out of nowhere and I wasn't expecting Vivid to drop something as big as this. And I was in talks yeah. with them. One of the things they talked about was that, you know, this speaker has been over four years in development or about four years in development. You know, that it, it started as a idea that, that Lawrence had when he was in a COVID lockdown in a hotel in South Africa. Yeah, so ever ever since then, it's kind of just been in development and something that he's been trying to bring the market. Yeah, and yeah. this like room, it's a huge room, and um, you can kind of get an idea if you look close. I think some of the other uh, photos show it better, but the speakers are pretty large. Yeah, um, I, yeah, I wanted to call out in this photo, you can see the rest of their line across the uh, the left wall. So you can see uh, what I refer to lovingly as the elf. Uh, speakers are the smurf speakers what is that guy from dragon ball majin boo yeah majin yeah, boo that's, yeah, like that's what that's what, that's what i think of i think of majin boo yeah. the that's majin the boo same. speakers and then the 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 fat bottom speakers are the the other ones as i call the them. llamas yeah they had and to make a pink wall. one and call it majin boo bro it's gonna suck i don't know what they're driving them. those speakers with uh but on the other wall it seems to be the electronics they're I'm passive I, I right yes they're passive i i believe it was the lynn climax series Oh, it was Lynn. It was Lynn. That's right, because the other the other photos will show that they're they presented yeah. with. Lynn. Yeah. So are are these? Uh, do you have to? Well, let me ask this question. Do we know what the crossover design looks like? Is the yes. is it on board inside of the speaker? Inside internally, it's all in the bottom of the speaker. There's three separate boards, or I think. Well, I guess there's five separate boards. Let me let me double check. So these are not like you can build your own. You know, they're only that way. You can only get them in that setup. What happened? Hold on. Yeah, it, it's having some fun there. It looks like uh, everyone, everyone went to this site after after we started going live. It yeah, crashed. Right. We so crashed I'm the Vivid site. I want to show you this picture right. because I'm curious about what they got going on here. So check this out and let's try and uh, let's try and break down what's happening in this image. Yeah, uh, Chloe here. has nothing on us because we just crashed the internet. So <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we've got uh, you know. Uh, a stack of source in the, in the middle, right? And it looks like they're doing the traditional uh, audiophile break out all the components. So that's fine. And but then we have then power amps, two kind of you know two amps on each side, um, and I assume that each pair is dedicated to one of the sides. Uh, so my question is, um, you know how how how's this how's this working? So I well, guess they, they have very well, they very well may have these bi wired. Uh, by amped rather, um, and um, but uh, I don't even know what show this is. I just know it's on. These were taken yesterday, and they sent them to me this morning. And um, I don't, you know, I know it's a show in China. I, 
Yeah, it says right there, but I don't think we can read in Chinese. Mandarin. <laughs> what, what that says, yeah. Um, new product conference. So, um, but look how big the speakers are, man. I mean, and they're and they're long. They're and thick they're, boys. They're thick, yeah. Um, it's pretty cool. I like the design, to be honest. I yeah. I really like it. I thought yeah. I was gonna not like it, but I really like it. It's super different. It's not a box. I think they probably sound amazing, and I wish they were an exponent because I really wanted to hear these. These probably make amazing bass for organs. These are probably the perfect speakers. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's always great when you put your uh, subwoofers uh, on board, right? Um, everybody yeah. knows I'm a big proponent of subwoofers, and you know, here, here you go. <laughs> They're like, let's let's add in eight subs on each speaker. Uh, but the the key here though is what what Ray said, right? Um, you know, when I saw that they were ported, I cringed a little bit and I'm all like, oh, bass reflex. But uh, since they are um, tuned at 19 hertz, you know, the uh, the phase change associated with bass reflex happens under uh, your port tuning frequency. And also unloading of the speakers happens underneath that port tuning. So you could put a uh, subsonic filter on these, you know, down at 18 hertz or something. And, and be in pretty good shape and get full range, not subsonics, but full range without any, uh, you know, the, of the well, low end. On, there are filters on these speakers, and they've made a big deal over that. Um, passive, passive hardwired filters. But I'm not quite sure what, you know, what, what the, you know, their own proprietary filters. I'm not sure really what the details are. Yeah, I got I got that back in the the spread or the, not the spreadsheet, the my share. So this is the yeah this is the exploded version and I think this is something that a lot of people just missed uh, during the announcement because I haven't seen anyone share this photo and I think it's an, an amazing photo to share if, if you know if you if you can um, but you see in the bottom there is the the uh, crossover units so there's a low frequency low and mid filter and then the uh, mid upper high and high frequency so three separate boards but a five way speaker design. Yeah, it's, I'm trying to read. I, my screen's pretty large. I'm trying to read the lettering here. It's, it's pretty. That is a cool shot, though. Man. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I wonder if they do have a. So th they're referring to a crossover as a filter, but I wonder if they mm -hmm. do have a true subsonic frequency elimination. Um, they have um, the the other thing too on here, and if you go down one just one into the some of the port design. They kind of do like a muffler design in order to eliminate some of the uh, emanation of sound from the back end. So they have this co this thing, but it's not just the regular port. There's this turbine that's inside, and then there's another like absorber end cap that goes into it with another like outer shell. So that I, it makes me think of like a muffler design where they're kind of probably uh, reflecting the low frequency in a certain way that kind of cancels itself out before it even exits the port. Okay, I just noticed I didn't really stream this out. So, um, yeah, if you hit your go live button up at the top, it should uh, should light you up. For your audience, I just hit two. It's not letting me do more than two. I have yeah, two you're limited to two. Okay, and then I do I have to, and then I so I just I just like kind of hit each circle. Is that it? Is that it? I'm live now, or I have to do something else? Uh, as it, long as you selected them and hit go live, you should. I don't see a go live, but. Uh, Say something. Oh, um, yeah. Right, right now, I don't think you're streaming out to, to anything. At least it doesn't show up on my stuff. I can see Hi-Fi Turtle is going out to his, um, and we got some folks coming in from your channel. So your your fans are are locked and loaded with us, Ray. That's awesome. Yes. Okay. okay. Now I think I, I see a little check. I see Facebook and um, uh, YouTube. There. Yeah, you're. Yeah, I, I see it now as well. Your your Facebook and your um, YouTube are, are live. So that's this is your, quite. The this is quite worrying. I may have to actually pay the 50 bucks a month for a paid account so I can stream to all three of my platforms or more. So, all right. Um, so yeah, sorry guys for the, for those of you on my channels, uh, in the Facebook group and, um, on, on our YouTube channel for the listening chair. Sorry about that. We, we've, you know, this is the hi-fi mafia and we're here and we're talking about a variety of audio file related topics and a little bit of Bitcoin. And we're, we're just kind of going over, um, what's what's going on with Vivid who dropped this $465,000 Moya M1 speaker, which we were just showing some shots that Lawrence Dickey, the designer, and Ewald Verkirk, the um, 
distributor sent from a show in China yesterday. Um, they, they sent, I was talking to those guys this morning, they sent over some shots. Um, do you, Giles, do you want to put up a couple more of the shots from the, from the show? Yeah, I'll, I'll get through those here uh, in, in just a second. Are those aluminum drivers, even for the tweeters? The, so the tweeters, typically uh, 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 Vivid does use aluminum. The, it, there are, is an aluminum backing, but then it has the uh, synthetic diamond on top, the synthetic black diamond on the tweeter and the upper mid-range uh, dome style driver. Carbon fiber uh, diamond cover, yeah. And it's pretty so, cool yeah. that the, the aluminum also has some uh, back end carbon fiber rings that go on the back that also change the breakup frequencies. That's awesome. And it wears Pokemon seeing, added underwear. They're saying it's lighter and more rigid than the, what is this stuff? Then pure Focal diamond. Uses? No, the Focal well, uses. Then beryllium? beryllium? Yeah. Hmm. That's what they were saying. They Peter. moved away from beryllium to this, this, this fi carbon fiber diamond you know, mix that they have that's supposed to be um, you know, not as, not as expensive. Beryllium is very, very expensive to produce. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, the other thing that's shocking about these speakers is that, and this is very, very surprising to me is that the sensitivity is 93. That's pretty high for a speaker of that size. Yeah. So uh, my curiosity is, you know, what kind of, what kind of amp do we need to drive these things? And, you Some know, 30 sixties from Boulder. <laughs> you're good <laughs> you have 400 grand for these it you might, have 100 160 might, for the amps you might need a much less power powerful amplifier you know lawrence who like i said designed these speakers he was totally up for coming onto the stream it's just 4 a.m there in china right now and they're kind of getting their rest because they've had a pretty busy day at the show and travel and all that kind of stuff but i'd like to bring you know both of those guys onto uh one of our monthly streams that where we actually have guests on and um, have them talk a little bit about the speaker and other stuff that's going on. Vivid. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. We, uh, you know, if uh, if anybody has questions, please drop those in the the chat. Um, Supernova is uh, is here with us, along with Siphonics is here, and then as noted before, Larry is is up in the crowd as well. So if you have any thoughts or questions around these speakers or anything else in general, uh, feel free to drop that in, and we will bestow upon you our collective wisdom of the ages. Absolutely. On any topic whatsoever. Collective uh, wisdom of the ages could be yeah. yours. Yes. Um, <laughs> Let's see. Let me put another picture. Daniel, 20, 20 years, right? Daniel? Hmm? How, old, how old are you, man? You, I'm 23. 23. All right. So we get 23 years of wisdom from Daniel. And, uh, <laughs> Nothing, me, basically. Over 60 years of wisdom. So there you go. Average you guys up, you're like 32 years old. 32, yeah. 32 collective years of wisdom. 40 um, years old, even. Yeah, so um, it looks like really quite a reception they've gotten over there in China um, for these these speakers with Lynn. And I was, uh, I don't know, I don't know why. I was just a little surprised to see them pairing up with Lynn. I, I really don't know why I was surprised, but I just make great stuff. Um, and you know, I, I guess I kind of think about Lynn as not a closed ecosystem, but a lot of times you see, like Lynn likes to show their stuff with. Lin speakers with a mm -hmm. Lin table and a Lin DAC. So whenever I see them with someone else's stuff, it's just a little weird. I don't know who the gentlemen up on stage are. I assume it's because um, I don't see Lawrence in those photos and I don't see um, Ewald, uh, the distributor there. I assume it's uh, somebody, the distributors from the Far East or, or, or a retailer or somebody like that. But um, it looks like they got a great reception. Yeah, I wonder if uh, I wonder if these are going to be at the Malaysia show because you, they could just drive them down for that. When is that? Again? What's that? When, when is that again? Uh, it's the end of April, so it comes after Axpona. Mm -hmm. Gosh, there's so many shows, man. So hey, many. when is Munich yeah. happening? May, They're probably May. Yeah. They're probably going to be there. I think it should most likely. Be there. They're they're. I mean, they're they're based in the Netherlands, so you know. It's close. Oh, yeah, rel relatively close. Maybe that's why they're not going to show the Moya. Maybe because they're going to show the Moya. The Munich, Moya. yeah. The Munich, yeah. Probably expensive to, to carry around and stuff. And yeah. In the future. Um, for sure. Yeah. So definitely something to keep your eyes open for on, on this speaker. It's looking pretty impressive. Anything that comes from Lawrence Dickey uh, needs to be taken seriously. And uh, we'll, we'll see how it works. And we'll see how it sounds. 
Yeah. Let's uh, let's talk a little bit about where we're each going to be throughout the year and what we have coming up on our agendas for for shows. Um, for and sure. Howard, maybe you want to start. Let us know what uh, the listening chair is going to be doing. Yeah. So right now we're actually at Southwest Audio Fest. Um, I know it doesn't look like I'm at Southwest Audio Fest because I'm not, but uh, we have Chris Noble there and he's been live blogging into the Facebook group again. Um, the listening chair with Howard Neller uh, on Facebook is our group. And um, so we're there. And then the next stop after that is going to be Expana, where all four of us are going to be. And we're going to, like I said, reunite. We're going to break some bread and hang out again and, and have a great time. Um, I, I remember when Daniel walked up to me at the show and said, excuse me, are you Howard Neller? And I said, yes. I think, I think it was me. And not I, think, I don't think oh, it was Daniel. I think it was yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. I didn't recognize you because you had a younger photo of yourself. Well, I, I, <laughs> I don't think that's him, right? <laughs> I'm getting to that. So then, so, then Ray, so then Ray goes, guys, it's him. Guys, it's him. And then they come running over. And then Danny looks at me and says, man, you look a lot older than you did in, in, your, in your Instagram photo. I said, yeah, Sorry, my honesty, man. <laughs> yeah, man, it's all good. I'll get, 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 get you back. It's okay. No problem. Um, so we'll be at Expana. And we're going to have, you know, full video coverage and live blogging in, into the group. And um, also, I just wanted to mention that we're just starting this room. Uh, where, uh, you know, I moved recently um, out of the big city, out of New York. And, Charles, maybe you could, if you don't mind pulling up really quick, the photo. We have, like, a preliminary mock-up. Got some new ones in this morning I need to look at. But we have a preliminary mock-up of what my room's going to look like. We're building a state-of-the-art listening room. It's going to be fantastic. We've got a bunch of great partners on the project. And um, we're going to make a series of videos on the listening chair, basically from the very beginning of, you know, every, the electricals from the pole into the room. It's going to be a floating room um, with uh, an isolation transformer from Taurus. And it's going to be in a Faraday cage. And it's going to be real state of the art. Now, you got that photo, huh, Josh? Yeah, you, you have to get us. you got to fly here. us over to listen to that room, man. Yeah. You know, we have just present again. Is that what I need to do? Yeah. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. Wow. Howard's all like, get my shit up there right now. Damn it. Hurry up. So it's going to be a great video series. Absolutely. That's, that's you know, for sure. I'm excited. Yeah. yeah so. On my, uh, on my stream earlier in the week, uh, Dave was, was on in the audience and he was mentioning that he was working with you on, on building this out. Oh, well, that's the thing. So uh, talk about it. Expana. We're going to be giving a presentation, I think on Saturday, Saturday afternoon or Saturday morning, we're one of the presenters, and we're going to be. I'm going to have on there um, Dave Malakor, who's the room designer, and um, the one of the guys from uh, Jokavi Acoustics, who was responsible for those cool looking um, room treatments you see in the photo. Actually, the diffuser in the back is going to open up. It's going to it's going to be on rails. It's going to open up, and it's going to be a very large screen TV behind those. So that's going to be really cool. Um, and then we're going to also have uh, Mike's partner. Uh, Dave's partner, Mike, is going to be on there also. And so we're going to talk about at Expana at this presentation, what it's like. I'm not the client in, in this because these guys are kind of working for me on, on this. And uh, what it's like to build this room from, from start to finish. And that's what the video series is going to be also. Right now, it's just an empty, huge garage, basically. We're going to turn that Wait, how much is that chair? Isn't it that chair like eight grand or something? Okay, so here's the thing on the chair. That's really a preliminary mock-up. Now, that's um, the IKEA version. No, <laughs> it, not, it's a rendering. It's a rendering. Not gonna. I mean, the, the gear. You just that's a. This is really an early mock-up. They threw any gear in there. My system does not look like that. I'm hoping to have the, the YG flagship speaker in there, so that's accurate. Um, but the chair is not going to be that chair because that chair is not good. It's comfortable. It looks cool, but it's not good for sound quality. And yeah, because it closes around your ears, right? All that, and it's very low. Yeah. So it's it's not an ideal place for, for your drivers as far as your ears are. But, you know, there's some decent ones you can get for three, four grand. Not as good as the arms chair, you know, at, at all, the real McCoy. But, yeah, that's an expensive chair. And I'd love to have that chair, but I'm not going to have it because – um it's just not great for sound quality yeah so i like uh, that lamp they have in there though yeah the, the lamp is fire yeah i like oh, the lamp. Yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 i got a new set of uh this is one i like about well we have uh, a design of the room we have a whole kind of like acoustical measurements of the room they sent over that's all mapped out and the structure of the room and you know building plans and stuff and then there's these mock-ups this is probably one of 10 photos i just i just kind of sent it over 
Um, and uh, it's um, it's going to change. I mean, it's going to change. And I think in one of the other photos, they have like cabinets on the sides. And I'm like, no, 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 no cabinets on the sides. We have cabinets for, for records. It's going to be built into the wall. It can't be protruding out from the wall. That's going to screw things up. Um, but it's we're making this video series from beginning to end. And, you know, building a room is really a dark art because you can spend a lot of money and you can put a lot of time into building a room and it can sound like crap and you can follow the golden ratio and it just it just chances are it's probably not going to sound very, very good. And some rooms accidentally sound pretty good. But hopefully with all the experience that we have uh, in, in this room between Jokavi Acoustics and uh, Manic Poor Designs, um, everybody else who's kind of weighing in from the industry, this is going to really be a great sounding room. And I told them, I don't want it just to look good. Like the, the, the guiding principle here is that form follows function. This needs to be an F1 racetrack. And if we have to make something look not quite as good to make it sound better, then that's what I want. I want a place where you go in there and you're just blown away. And it, it should be a great place where I'll be able to review super high-end gear. It's not a lot of people who are set up to review the, the Vivid speakers. Um, mm -hmm. the, Goyers, and, uh, the, the Moyers, actually. And so I'll be able to review speakers like that in this room. They're going to have to send, you know, two or three bulky guys to help me get the speakers set up. But, um, you know, I'll be – Hopefully it's on the ground floor. <laughs> it's like I built it in the basement. They're like, we cannot send you speakers. It is. Well, the sure. problem is so what I'm building actually is an experience center at the house. We're going to have five or six stereo systems of all price points. And, you know, we're right on the beach. So you can hang out. You can go in the back. You can go sailing. You can go four-wheel driving on the beach. You can barbecue. And I just had a uh, an outdoor pool table delivered. So I figured I'd throw the guy 30, 40, 50 bucks, the guys to bring it out onto my back porch, which is not easy, to, uh, my back deck, which is not easy to get to. And these guys are like, no way. We're not dealing with this. We don't want to damage it. It's going to take us an hour to do this. So I have this 400, 500 pound outdoor pool table sitting in my garage. It's going to be my listening room and very little way to move it. It's very awkward and to get it around. So I'm going to have to have like a party and have like six guys come over and we'll have to lift it and we have to move it around. But it's going to be a place to come play pool on the water, drink whiskey, smoke cigars, go into the room, hang out, listen to music. It's going to be, it's going to be good. Cool. Sure. Sure. So what Dan, you, Joss? no, no, Dan, you first tell us me? what you got coming up. Yeah. All right. So we got Expona really excited. Me and Ray, we already got the rooms dialed in to what we're going to visit, how much time we're going to spend. We have 15 minutes per room <laughs> and if they pay us, we're going to be there for more time, but we don't know yet. And we got, the show obviously i'm one of their ambassadors i hope giles said he's going to be there so if you're not there i'm going to be pissed because that's, I missed you last that's year. the plan right now i should be there unless something weird happens and ray is coming to the show as well in cali yeah so, i'm gonna make i'm gonna make it out to the show this year that's awesome that's so, Charles, well, what are you anticipating something weird's gonna happen i mean are you gonna be there or not man Who, me yeah yeah uh, well, so my son also has a civil air patrol encampment exactly the same dates. So, uh, you know, as long as nothing weird happens with that stuff, I'll be okay. fine. But family always comes first for me. So, you know, I, I have to make sure all that stuff is taken care of before I do any of these other things. Well, we hope they'll make it because that would be the uh, Hi-Fi Mafia reunited. Man. Yeah, that, that's the goal, right, um, to, to be there. But go ahead, Dan. So you got you got the Costa Mesa. Costa Mesa? Yeah, Costa Mesa. Yeah, the Costa Mesa show. Then you got Expona. Yeah, that's it for now. I'm hoping to get in contact with more shows like the Florida Capitol. But yeah, that I have to meet them first, you know, and then getting talks with them. But yeah, I'm getting better at selling myself and what I do. But it takes time. And I, I love taking time and learning and enjoying the process. Because once you're at the end or you're, you're already done everything, it feels like there's no more purpose, you know. And I love the journey. I'm, I love meeting you guys, meeting new companies, going to the shows. It's just amazing and it makes me the happiest person ever, to be honest. That's awesome. Now, you, uh, you're you doing some stuff for Kimber Cable, right? Yeah, for sure. Oh, you even got a t-shirt. I thought that was a Spider-Man. No, it's Kimber, bro. Yeah. Bro, their shit is comfy. <laughs> <laughs> their hoodies and shirts are so comfy. And, yes, they sent me their – the their select cables the 1163 i think they're called and they're five thousand dollars 120 bucks and i love the cables they made ray don't believe in me but <laughs> the cables made my system sound so much uh airy 
and I just love the cables. It made my system so much better, and now I need to upgrade my gear again. So I'm in talks with Jishelli Labs and iFi Audio. So let's see if that goes through. But yeah, I'm Jay, excited. I, don't, I don't know iFi Audio at all. I know they exist in, in their gear, but I don't know them. But uh, the Jishelli folks are always really nice, and they're they're really yeah, cool. Yeah. They're amazing. Yeah, yeah, real down to earth, real nice, um, and and nice fun gear. I use their stuff on the daily too. So. Yeah, as for the cheaper deck, and they're like, oh, but there's this one, and then now the deck came out to be like a grand. So I'm getting their upgraded deck. So I'm super excited to listen to it because the SDG one that I have is not that good. The song cost because I got it because of Thomas and Stereo, but yeah, we'll see how they compare. What was the deal with, <laughs> what was the deal with Ray? You're saying, Ray, did, Ray, you believe in cable, no? I mean, as, as far as... Oh, let's get it. <laughs> that, that, that's not my, my, my thing, to be honest. No. You know, I actually am working with Kimber, though. Okay. Uh, I've got something that's going to be coming from Kimber, so we'll see if that changes that. Uh, but there is going to be something that I can only do with Kimber, so you know, there's some there's some behind the scenes work going on there. So it should be interesting. I'm hoping that it's going to work out the way that I'm anticipating, but we're going to find out. Nice. Yeah, we'll be looking forward to that, man. Because uh, these days, 2024. I mean, most most audio files. I, mean, I use that really. Not you know, non audio files. Looking in the audio file, most audio files believe cables can increase performance, and I certainly do. So. Right. On. Yeah, it's so definitely the me- popular opinion for sure. Yeah, before we get to Ray, and Ray, you're going to have a full segment here. I do mm-hmm. want to call out, if anybody in the crowd has any questions, please pop those up. We were joined here in the comments by uh, Suburban Barbecue. So welcome to uh, welcome to the show here with us. And What's the chair? Me too, man. Yeah, that's the, the, the <laughs> and Ames, if it's beautiful. <laughs> the Ames chair. And, uh, I, you know, I'm live also on Instagram, but I'm not really following comments. So if folks are commenting over there, Please come over to uh, to YouTube, and I can see your uh, comments come in. But at least you can see the show on that side. Um, you see with that, from my channels coming in there or no? Uh, yeah, we got some folks from your channels in here. Absolutely. Cool. Cool. Wait, so Siphonic says something funny. He said 170k on IG should be your selling point. Uh, you wish it worked like that. Sometimes having a ton of followers doesn't mean anything because. One thing that I've been having a problem with the companies is my content because companies don't want to send products to for me to make base videos with them. They want me they want me to talk about their product. So if you're not talking about their products, they don't want to work with you. So it doesn't matter if you get a million views, if you don't talk about their products and why you should buy their products, it's not a deal for them. So I'm I've been switching my content around to f- satisfy them. But yeah, having a ton of followers is not a really good selling point because I know people with l- way less followers to get a lot more products. And it's because of their content. So, yeah, that's a the very astute realization. I mean, that's it's it's really uh, important to understand uh, the differences between what the platform wants, right? What Instagram wants, and then what uh, you know affiliate brands, uh, brand partners, and that kind of stuff. What they want, right? So, what might get a ton of views on Instagram is not necessarily what any brand partner wants because those views are worthless to them, you know. Um, they, they, they want you to talk about it. And, you know, if you can get a thousand of the right views, right. it's often a lot more valuable than a million of well, junk. I know, ben, I know you have quality viewers. I mean, a lot of, there are a lot of, you know, channels or platforms that people have where they're basically like non-demographic, uh, you know, of non-interest, you know, they're people from countries in South America or other Mideast where there's no distribution distribution for the products that these companies want to sell. There's no money for the people to buy these products. They couldn't get them if they wanted to. Um, half the people or more are, are females or, or spam or pretending to be females. So I know I know you got a quality audience. So that, that makes a difference. And a lot of a lot of influencers, you know, don't have they may have big numbers, but like you were saying, big numbers by himself don't mean doesn't mean that yeah. much. What it's and that's what of. I've been working for too. All my like 97% of my followers are male. Uh, uh, 60% of my followers are around 45 to 60 years old. So in, their, in that buying category. And most of them are America, Europe, or like South America. But most of America and Europe. So that's a lot of where people buy products too. And now I've been having a surge in uh, Japanese and Chinese markets. So that's pretty cool too because that's where audiophile is the biggest. Yeah, right on. So, so Ray, Ray, let, yeah, Ray, let's move on to you. What 
what's uh what's your business what's, my, what's the business what's your business it's, it's more high end stuff. It's more high end stuff coming in. You know, it, I got in with the the YG crowds. You know, YG sent me that ta the Talus speaker that I did the review on most recently. Uh, we're going to be doing the Dyn Audio Confidence Fifty uh, soon, hopefully. Uh, that's probably going to be an after Expona or right around Expona uh, release. Uh, I've got a secret project that I'm working on right now uh, with another company that I can't dis disclose at the current time. Uh, but that's going to come out uh, in a few weeks as well. So I look forward to that. That's probably going to be uh, the about a week or two before Expona as well. Um, and then there's just the, the there's uh, some SPL equipment that I've got. I've got both their stereo amp, the S800, and their monoblox, the M1000. Uh, then there's some stuff that's going on there with uh, some of the Kimber cabling stuff that's uh, going to come out and uh, going to be some one of the one of the most unique videos I think on Instagram and, and YouTube and uh, one of the one of the uh, ones that is partly inspired by some of the stuff that Daniel's been doing. Cool, cool. Oh well, yeah, just right. one thing I want to mention is well, in addition to Expana listening show, we're going to be in uh, Munich also. So look for that. That'll be cool. And so Ray, you'll be at uh, Costa Mesa show. Yes, you'll Costa be Mesa. At Corona. That's the that's the two right now. Uh, I was planning to go to Capital Audio Fest or, or going to try to make that effort as well. I'm not sure how I want to handle that because Capital Audio Fest is happening like two days after the election. So I don't know if I want to be in Washington D.C. during during that time. <laughs> yeah. Um, you have to go to. Well, I guess you do have to kind of fly into Washington. I'm, I'm not sure where the if it does the air, airport nearby because it's really not in Washington. Right, it's outside of Washington. Yeah. Virginia. I'm not sure what the next closest airport is, but. Yeah, you can still have to find like DFW. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? You find yourself locked up in a federal penitentiary. I mean, it's, you know. Well, <laughs> as long as you don't do certain things, you'll be fine. <laughs> and don't go to certain places, you'll be fine. Don't bring your cell phone. Don't bring your cell phone because they have location <laughs> tracking data, man. So that's first. That's my first rule of advice to you, man. Mm -hmm. They're always yeah. watching. Yeah. All right. Now it's my turn. Yes. Uh, uh, okay. What's coming up? So from a show perspective, what's on the schedule this year is uh, the Costa Mesa show. I guess that's in June. Uh, next month, it'll be uh, um, it'll be the Malaysia show. It'll be uh, Expona, and then after that, uh, I've got uh, Cedia, which is I think in the September time frame, and that one's here in in Denver. And I love that show. It's, it's always a good one. I wanted to go to South by Southwest, but I've never been able to make it to that one. Um, and then uh, wrapping back in to the beginning of next year, it'll be CES again in January of 25. So less, you know, where's CES this year? Do you know? It's in Vegas every year. Vegas. Every year. Oh, yeah, CES, that yeah. changes, right? Because it was in Texas once and you were there. It, yeah, I was yeah. in, it was in Texas once and I was there, but it's going to be in Denver for the next two or three or four years or something like that. There's a, I, nice. I don't, I forget the, the contract period. Um, and then from a content point of view, uh, wrapping up a bunch of stuff that I'm doing for next level acoustics. So uh, I've did a, a, their in wall double 10 sub and uh, their uh, fusion frame sound bar for frame style television. So the ones you put on the wall and show the pictures and stuff. And then I've got their passive 18 inch sub coming in. And then their top of the line soundbar uh, for uh, for television installations. So handling that stuff, and then um, I'm going to be doing three live streams a week. <laughs> I'm a glutton nice. for punishment. So I've got my yeah. live stream on Tuesday evenings, um, where I usually have a, a manufacturer uh, or a personality as a guest, and then we talk about stuff and, and other things. And you know, Axpona was there uh, last week, and this coming week I've got record turntables and. Uh, uh, the Northern AV show from Benang. Uh, they'll have a representative. Wilson uh, will be there. Yeah, three. Uh, and then uh, on, I haven't decided the final day for this yet, but I'm going to start doing a un live unboxing every week uh, as long as I have stuff to unbox. Uh, and uh, this week it'll be the uh, the Kef. Well, actually I did a, um, a laptop unboxing earlier this week, but I'm, I'm trying to catch up with some content. So I'll be doing the Kef LSX2 LTs, I think is the model, uh, their little powered bookshelf speaker. And I'm going to do that later this afternoon. Um, and then I'm trying to pick a day for that. And I don't know, there's there's so many streams out there that I conflict with something on some day. So it's almost, almost impossible to find a free day. And then we're going to have this show every Sunday at this time uh, where we get on and cover uh, audiophile hi-fi topics uh, and other things every week 
Um, For sure. Gosh, you know, I, I have a solid steel rack that I got to do in unboxing, but I'm not going to do it live because I'm totally convinced I'm not going to be able to put it together like without, you know, trying to read through the instructions or calling somebody to help or whatever. So I'm just not going to embarrass myself. Wait, Joe, what's the difference between the new LT and the older version? Except no like three hundred dollars less, because that's yep. what I was looking for, and it seems the know. same I, product. When when I make the video, I'll be able to tell you. Right now, it's sitting in a box in the living room, so I haven't made it that far to. I don't even know what the specs on it are. Um, it's the I'll, it's the same exact speaker, but the LT version. I believe it, the only difference is it doesn't do Rune, and there's a few other things that it doesn't do. I don't think it does Bluetooth either. Um, I mean, maybe it does do Bluetooth. Bluetooth is no big loss, but Rune is yeah. kind of unfortunate. Um, from an audiophile perspective, um, I, I love Rune. I've also got the the Kef Cube that I'll be doing their 15 inch sub, um, so I'm excited for that one. And a litany of other things. I'm even going to do a gaming chair to replace this busted old chair I'm sitting in right now. From um, yeah, so I, 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 I do all kinds of stuff. We're going to have a listening chair contest in the Facebook group to, to actually select the chair we're going to use. But I feel really obligated to tell one quick because you mentioned CES and I get. I was telling you guys some really off-color stories before we started the, the live stream today. But I got to tell you, like, I went to CES one year. And, and you're only going to get the end of the story if you go to my paid subscription. No, I don't have a paid subscription service. But I got a call. We're going, we're going to – yeah, not only fans. We're going to, <laughs> we're going to see CES. And I got a call from someone. And he's saying, I got a friend. It's, my friend has a friend in the porn business because the porn convention was is given at the same time that, you know, uh, the audiophile areas. And he's like the guy bought a table at this at the award ceremony, and um, it's you know the table costs like you know fifteen thousand dollars, and he has two extra seats. And do you guys want to come? You can sit, get dressed up, put a tuxedo on, and you can come. You know, so I'm like, sure, I'm gonna be there anyway for CES. So I might as well. So and I can't tell the whole story, but we get there, <laughs> and, you know, we get a limo, limo pulls up, and a red carpet. So we're on the now we're on the porn red carpet, and it was back in the day. I don't even know if it's digital photography can't remember, but they, they just take your picture, you know? So everyone's taking our picture, getting out of this limousine. And if you're nobody, they just throw it away, you know, or whatever. But, um, and then, so we went into the award ceremony and I'll just, I'll end the story right there. But it was a very, very interesting experience and in tangent with my uh, audio uh, CES experiences. Yeah, so, we, we have a question from the audio project and I have no idea what the answer is, but maybe one of you guys does. Uh, any brands coming with Purify drivers? Uh, only the what is that brand? Bucard. Only Bucard has been adding purified drivers. I haven't seen any other there, brand. There's a few other brands that have them or have been adding They're them really now. Small. They're nothing that special because the purified drivers are those drivers that look ugly. It looks like they've been burnt, <laughs> yeah. but they sound sorry, amazing. Sorry, Bucard. <laughs> <laughs> no, Bucard is great, but the drivers are ugly ugly because they look like they've been burnt but they're supposed to be like yeah, super pull, pull this, super yeah. good no distortion and all that stuff i mean I I'll, like, I'll listen to a, a purify speaker i don't care i'll listen to it i'll listen to it but I'll, I'll listen to it as well um I, I i listen i listen to all kinds of ugly speakers i think there's a lot of super high-end speakers that are just absolutely hideous um, but yeah. they sound pretty darn good that's the point i don't care if they're ugly if they sound good so the matters he said karma lingdorf Lingdorf ha hit me up for some reason. I might work something out. We'll see. They are the most linear of all drivers. Yep, there it goes. They're yeah, great Lingdorf drivers. Has got the, I got an AVR that I want to look at. Their their video processor um, for for TV and stuff. They have some cool stuff. I'm looking sure. at the drivers. I mean, they are a little bit ugly. I I agree with you. Like the, the speaker, actually, the, the cabin is gorgeous, beautiful woodwork. For sure. There's the the drivers. Yeah, they're you know, but I. I don't know if they're covered or not. If they put a cover over them, but they are a little bit ugly. Not not terrible, but they're a little ugly. I give you, I give you that. <laughs> I'll give you. All yeah. right, we are we are coming up on time here, so let's uh, let's do a little round robin for any closing thoughts for from everybody. We got a, another five minutes or so left to go before we all turn into pumpkins. Um, how are you go first this time? Yeah, I just think you know um, the the new speaker, the, the Moya G One. Um, you know, when, when, when Vivid does something, people are always very interested and there's a lot of fans. I think that these speakers pro have the promise of being something very special. Of course, they're very expensive. We'll see. Uh, I, 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 I'm sorry if they're not an exponent. That would be a big letdown for me, but um, I'm looking forward to hearing them at some point. Maybe uh, 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 they'll have my GTT Audio in New Jersey and I'll be able to check them out. 
um, is one of their, their big dealers. Um, and um, we'll see you guys at the next show is at Expana and keep an eye open for um, what uh, the videos on the room, the building of the room from start to finish. It should be really, really interesting. And then uh, also just I want to just plug the, the Facebook group again, the listening chair with Howard Neller. It's a great group. Everybody's been posting photos of their systems from all over the world, including Daniel. Um, I want to see some more stuff from, from Ray and from Giles in there, but uh, all good. So, yeah, thanks. Well, let me just read this comment real quick. I thought it was really funny. Uh, so Suburban Barbecue said they kind of look like they have been sitting in a Texas warehouse for a few months summer. <laughs> That's an amazing comment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Right, well, Ray, since our Dan, since you're talking, um, what are your closing thoughts for us today? Closing thoughts. Thank everyone for watching. Thanks. I don't even know how to do this, but uh, well, let's just go for big announcement for Dan. Is Dan made his bed? Yeah, I made my bed. Look, <laughs> I never make my bed because I feel like if I make it, I'm gonna unmake it at night. You know. <laughs> that's, very, that's very profound, man. When you're like this, that really is. Mm -hmm. But yeah, thanks everyone for watching. Wait, are we closing it off now? Yeah, we're, yeah, we're, now. we're at the All hour. Right. We're, we're doing final thoughts. So thanks everyone for watching. Thanks, Ray, Hi Fi Turtle, for watch for, for watching for coming to the live. Thanks, Howard, with the listening chair. Thanks, Giles. Uh, we had a ton of fun. We went over the new vivid audio speakers. We went over Bitcoin for some reason, but we did. Uh, we went over what everybody's doing for this year, and you guys can watch this live later if you want. It's going to be pretty fire. Uh, I love the boys. Can't wait to see them at Expona. And, yeah, thanks, th thanks everyone, for being here, and until the next one. Right on. And then <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll, we'll do Ray next, but before Ray, we'll, we'll say hello to Chris, and then – Goodbye. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> you missed it by a bit. <laughs> oh. All right, Ray, what yeah. you got? I'm really looking forward to Expona. It's you know the biggest North American show. I'm really looking forward to Costa Mesa with the show this year. It'll be my first non-expona show ever, actually. So looking forward to that. Uh, I'm looking forward to this Thursday, March 21st, where the Hi-Fi Mafia, the same faces you're seeing on this screen, will be live with Estelon, the Estonia speaker maker, will be on with their CEO, Alfred, or sorry, CEO Alyssa and uh, chief designer, Alfred. Uh, so look forward to that. Make sure you subscribe to Hi-Fi Mafia, subscribe to Hi-Fi Turtle as well, so you can continue to see all that stuff. Uh, see also see you know what's coming up um, with my room some of the secret projects i've been working on uh, and of course you know all the expona and the show content uh, that's going to come uh, after that as well awesome and just apologies to everyone in my in my uh, audience who i kind of cut off because i didn't get the live stream going uh, until about halfway through so we'll we'll fix that next time right on and then for me um, you know, thanks everybody for joining and watching today. Your time is precious. So we appreciate that you spend it with us. Uh, make sure uh, that you subscribe and you can see on your screen here, some of our ats. So we've got the at Giles McCoy and at Hi-Fi Turtle. So uh, make sure you pop over to those real quick. And then, I forgot the at. But and, uh, and Dan's <laughs> at base therapy. And then Howard, what's your, what's your YouTube? Is it at the listening chair or? Well, it's, it's kind of weird the way it is. It's someone had that. So, I mean, if you put in the listening chair with Howard Neller, it, it'll pop up, but it's really at the listening chair and then an underscore. Okay. At the listening chair underscore. So make sure you subscribe to all of those. And then, uh, you know, for any, any brands or distributors out there, you know, we're always looking for sponsor sponsorship and uh, opportunities to help carry messages across to everyone. So um, we're always happy to discuss any type of uh, relationship you might be interested in. So let us know, um, you know, as a group, the four of us cover a huge amount of territory every year, uh, whether it's shows, live streams, uh, YouTube video content, Instagram, uh, we're all over the place. And, uh, you know, when you partner with us, you get access to um, all of those venues uh, to put your message out to the larger world. So if anybody's out there and interested, let us know and we can figure out something to help get your message out to the world. Well, that's the beauty about the Hi-Fi Mafia is that this streams over all of our channels simultaneously. So that's, that is indeed huge. Absolutely. All right. Howard, close us out. Close out. Everybody really... I think the message really is what Giles said. It's like, 
it's Sunday afternoon and everyone's got their own stuff and everyone's busy. So we really appreciate everybody joining us, man. And we do this every Sunday night and we're going to update everybody. My, my goal is going to be is basically we're going to say this is what happened in the week in audio. OK, you everything you're going to need to know what happened. We're going to have, we're going to go over it. So thank you all very much. All right. Take care, buddy. We'll see you guys in the next one. Right, guys. See ya. Thanks, everyone. Right.